Do you want to know what someone's type is just based on the way they talk? Someone who is extroverted or logical? Then keep watching this video. Alright, welcome back to Type Evolution, where I show you how to evolve through your personality type and to understand and have a deeper insight into people's personalities. So you can call me Olympia and this video is about the business communication style. The previous video, which I urge you to watch first, is about the sincere communication style, you can watch it here. So very short introduction, Viktor Gulenko, a famous socionist, came up with this model of four communication styles, sincere, business and passionate and cold-blooded. You can group the 16 personality types, 16 Jungian types, into four groups, like I just said, and each of them has four types, obviously. So the business communication style is characterized by extroversion and thinking. The MBTI types ENTJ, ESTJ, ESTP and ENTP. Anyone who is ENTJ or ESTJ with extrovert thinking as their first function and who is a clear extrovert is gonna sound the most like this. Basically, they are the archetype of this communication style. ENTJ, ESTJ, ESTP and ENTP, they all come across as someone who is more of a directorial influence, like a manager, someone who is authoritative oftentimes, who speaks in a tone that is matter of fact. They often assume leader positions because their voice already can be kind of imposing on their surroundings. People who do not have this kind of voice, especially the opposite, which is sincere communication style, they might have the opposite effect where they don't come across as professional. Usually the business communication style and the cold-blooded communication style, they come across as the most professional in a business environment because of the logical thinking component. The video examples I have included here I hope I'm going to show you the differences. So even though these people have a very similar way of talking, the contents are going to show you what their actual functions are, whether they are ESTP or ENTJ or not. Yeah, it, yeah. It, uh, uh, you know, on, on the right, for, for as long as I've been alive, there's been uh, a lot of questions about media objectivity. And I don't think that those questions are ill-founded. Uh, I think this is why, as I've been saying, it's really incumbent on the media to do as much reporting of the facts as possible and leave a lot of the hyperbole out of it. I know that's really difficult in a time when, you know, the hyperbole seems to not only get ratings, but also to, to jog people's kind of amygdalas. But the fact is that the, the, more, uh, the more the media underplays, I think the better they will do in terms of people trusting them. Because at at this time, what's happening right now is everything's breaking down into tribal affinity. These quickly. So anybody in the banking, mortgage, and escrow uh, areas? So um, is any, anybody in the room? I don't. A few of you. Uh, so if you are a middle person, uh, uh, a middle person in in this sector, um, blockchain for you is is going to be a, a disruptor. And and whether or not Bitcoin ever takes off, that sort of beside the point. It's the underlying infrastructure that will dramatically change the work that's being done. And marketing, so we've got uh, any, anybody in the marketing space and advertising space. So it was in a previous panel, somebody was talking about um, teaching kids how to code so that they can work with Google Ads. Um, and that's a, that's a big waste of money. All right, everything's smooth, you know, I'm doing okay. I do it because, listen, when I'm on the show, I've got a task in front of me, I've got to stamp out disease and suffering the whole time. Right. I'm focused on that story, and I don't get to talk about everything I want to talk about. And a little bit tired of talking to... It does make a little money. Mentally ill people on your television show each that. day. I didn't say that. No, I, I said... <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> you said that. I did say you that, You always yeah. derogate them. I do not. These are people that are looking for good, solid help, and they get it. How much money have you sent July, August, September, and October? Zero. That makes you I've been a buying... deadbeat. A deadbeat. I... Goodbye, Mr. Griffin. Hey, what about my counter suit? What it's dismissed. Now I can go eat my sushi. Goodbye. 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 Bye. 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 Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, you know Goodbye, what? I Mr. Don't Mulvey. Have it. From this court, you get nothing. Goodbye. We're done. No, that's no. Money. We're done. Money that you're putting. We are twenty-seven hundred. D O N E. Done. There's literally a cork called strangeness. 
because nobody freaking knows what the hell it's doing or what is going on. Damn, I hate physics. That's not a question. <laughs> we don't see them directly. We can't tell you what, we can't show you a photo of them. So they're just placeholder words for them. So just like, just get used to that. All of quantum physics transcends our personal life experience. So to describe it, we have to sort of invent words. One of them is just strange. That doesn't mean we can't describe it and know what it, how, how it behaves uh, in and of itself and with other quarks. So don't put too much meaning in the word itself. It's the idea that matters. Nick, you don't experience a proton in your life, but it's a fundamental part of nuclei that make up the atoms that comprise your body. So just because you don't see it, feel it, touch it, taste it, or smell it, does not mean it does not exist. And part of the entire purpose of why we have science at all, in particular the methods and tools of science, is to decode that which is true about nature that otherwise transcends your sensory perception. So if I had way more eyeballs, then we'd all be really comfortable, right? So in preparation for this talk, I made myself a shirt. It's uh, googly eyes. <laughs> it took me 14 hours and 227 googly eyes to make this shirt. So I do a lot of things like this. I see a problem and I invent some sort of solution to it. For example, brushing your teeth. Like, it's this thing we all have to do, it's kind of boring, and nobody really likes it. So what about if you had a machine that could do it for you? I call it, uh, I call it the toothbrush helmet. <laughs> Try to hit me, man. I got, I'm a good defensive fighter. Try to hit. Come on, man. Try to hit me, bitch. Man, shut up. Man. Try to hit me, motherfucker. Come on, get it. Get it. Come, on, come on, motherfucker. Come on, get it. See that? Slap your ass. Come on. Come on. Stop. Now, come on, bitch. I ain't come playing. On. Come on, bitch. I'm more rational. I don't let my feelings get involved. I don't yeah. let race get involved. I stick with logic. Yeah. See, if you did more of that, Cardi, yeah. you wouldn't be sending out these whack-ass posts. Whenever you sit down and talk to someone, Cardi, about politics or anything, if you can detach your emotions, you can learn something from the left and the right. The time is now, Cardi. Yeah. Time to repent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, this is what she said. Politics is actually my thing. You want to know why? Uh-oh. Because I pay more taxes than both you fuckers combined. Hey, man, stop cussing, man. We Christians, man. Cardi, that don't mean you know more about politics. That means you make more money than me. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, How do you put that together? That's right. You was upset. You was irrational. You wasn't thinking. I understand. I don't care how upset. I've never said nothing this damn dumb in my life. What is, there's no correlation between how much taxes you yeah. pay and what you know about politics. I mean, yeah. how irrational is your brain? <laughs> Yeah, this is from the main event of WrestleMania, and like, I don't know if I could swear on here, but there's. Sure, why not? There was a point in the match where like, I was teasing that I was gonna throw a girl for a table, and then I went, Tables are for bitches! And I threw the table. I get to be Sonya Blade. Like, I got to do a her karana into an arm bar just like she does in the video I'm sorry, game. I'm sorry, a what? Into a. It's like when you throw somebody with like your feet around their head, and then you break their arm. Mortal Kombat is different in that it has like a story mode, and then like the actual gameplay mode, right? Sure, Which sure. is the fighting part. Yeah. So the story mode, it's pretty, it's a lot like. Like doing like a movie, like but dubbing over and trying to fit your mouth to like when it fits. But the video sure. game part, it's like you get to play up the, you know, you, you mean you put the controller down and like the person's just bouncing, you know, while you like go to make a sandwich oh, and the other. So I'm out there and I'm like I get to bounce next to the thing and be like, <laughs> do you want to fight? You know, or like this is this is not the last you've seen of me. You know, like the problem is you can only really type people with this communication style if they are very obvious their type and they don't lean towards ambiversion. It's mostly the case if someone is like a standard version of their type. But then this tool can be very useful. Some types might try to emulate this style, especially the cold-blooded people, 
if they push their extroversion or even some feeling types might try to emulate this, but it's rather tricky. The sincere communication style is the most compatible with this one because this one is very matter of fact, it's focused on the extroverted world outside of them and it's logical. They like a more flowing, more internal, sincere, softer communication style that complements them. Business and the sincere communication styles really go hand in hand really well together. It's the best complement. It's like yin and yang, like the most stereotypical yin and yang. Please welcome Annie Webb. Hey. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. This is exciting to have you here. You are a futurist, which is fun word to say. Yeah, I have a um, weird job title, right? <laughs> well, I want to get to that in a second, <laughs> but um, what's really exciting is you, you just almost just sort of just came off the stage yeah. uh, and you were presenting your 2019 Emerging Tech Trends report. Uh, and I heard the, the event was over capacity. Thousands of people wanted to get in. Tell me how that went. <laughs> um, I think for me it went well. I don't know about there was an overflow room that apparently also filled yeah. up. So I, I mean, it's listen, um, there's South by is this amazing, magical few weeks. Um, to be together in a room where we can talk about the, the future and technology is incredibly humbling. Are you the Adele of futurism? <laughs> um, that would be amazing. <laughs> uh, let's make that happen. Okay. Hashtag Amy is the Adele of futurism. That's probably too long for Twitter, uh, right? Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we're going to workshop that <laughs> one. But what's really cool, so what, and essentially what you were reporting on was you, you brought it. Yeah. Oh, I can't lift it. Yeah, I know, uh, right? It is the... Uh, the worst compatibility, once again, is with the same communication style. So business and business, these people are going to butt heads, especially in a discussion, in any kind of conversation, because they're going to fight for the upper hand. This is very much the case with extroverts in general, but especially with this communication style. Business communication style, they talk business, literally. And they want to have the upper hand, they want to you know, be at the forefront, the leading voice, literally, in a conversation. And this is very problematic if you have two people of the same communication style talking, especially debating. My dad had a problem with it, and I was like, you know what, I don't want to be like my dad. But you know what, man? Why I was, you, I can't even finish the sentence. You scream it in my ear! I let you finish! Let me finish, get a brief, get a beat! Then talk, man, I can't even finish what I'm saying! However, people of the same communication style can be quite compatible in other ways. If they are the same personality type especially, this is actually good compatibility. They might not have the best communication, however, they are, can be compatible on other levels which are related to their functions. So if they have the same functions, it can still be a good compatibility, a good pairing. I would not say, oh, you should not date anyone who has the same communication style. You should not be friends with anyone with the same communication style. That's not the case. However, it might be tricky, especially when it comes to work environments. Then it could be tricky if you have the same communication style and especially if you like butt heads a lot and, you know, fight. <laughs> All right, that was mostly it. I hope that the examples helped you. And I see you in the next video. Please like, subscribe, share if you liked it. And yeah. All right. Have a good day. Bye.